Hello, and welcome to another episode of Knights of the Old Republic. I am here, joined with no one, playing this game from, like, 25 years ago. I didn't remember how to do the inventory, and was, like, very clumsily trying to figure out how to play, so I cut out the section where I was trying to remember what my inventory was and what even this section of the game is. So, uh, yeah, I'm also joined here with my two delightful co-hosts, um, Kokido. Oh, man, that's pretty good. That's, um, Bacardi Superior. I'm gonna, I don't know, wasn't sure if you got that in the frame, but it's kind of a fun, like, clear tiki glass. It's a little bit of uh, cinnamon and nutmeg on the top there. Oh, man, that's good. Um... It's the uh, Bacardi, Bacardi Coquito that they put out at the end of the year. It's a little warm, though, because I just bought it. It's been sitting on my counter. But this is uh, my other Tiki buddy. The uh, Gale it's some kind of like Galliano promotional mug they did. And this is um, the old-fashioned eggnog with like two ounces of um, like Smith & Cross. Mmm. Wow, we. Oh boy, that's good. They're both good. I'm gonna be fucked. <laughs> I'm gonna be fucked after I drink this. I was uh, I wasn't expecting them to be as strong as they are, and these glasses to be as fillable as they are. And it's almost about 1 p.m. on a Tuesday here. Uh, even though it is my break, I feel a little guilty about just getting lit by myself <laughs> while I'm doing a holiday episode. But it is the end of the year, so I figure it's only appropriate. I actually had a coquito the other night. Um, which again, the only difference between Coquito and eggnog is, uh, Coquito uses coconut milk and eggnog uses egg, and otherwise the ingredients are the same. Milk, sugar, some kinds of, like, condensed milks usually, and, like, sugar and warming spices. I said sugar twice, who cares? It's a fiesta. It's a feast. It's a holiday spectacle. A special of epic proportions. Uh, I think I gotta, like, go rescue people or something. I don't remember anything about this sequence, man. This was so forgettable in the original game. Um, I'm sure I gotta fight some Lord of Darkness or whatever. I mean, it is Star Wars. They're gonna throw some... some darkness dude in black clothing who's talking about evil and control and... you know, Christian ideas of good and evil and in terms of lasers and lightning strikes. So, we'll see. Um, where the fuck is the exit to this place? The elevator, I guess? Droid maintenance? Detention? You might remember, it's very hard to come back to an RPG you haven't even touched in three months and kind of like, confidently continue forward as if no time has elapsed. But hey, cutscenes do help. Us. We're at the Evan Hawk. Like we figured, it's under heavy guard. But don't worry, we'll figure out a plan to take care of them. Thank you, homie. We'll just do a save. I do remember that I need to do this at, like, an absurd frequency while I'm uh, playing. But yeah, life has been good. So I alluded to in a previous episode that I wanted to move, and we did move. I don't even think I alluded. I just said I wanted to. Um, I guess we're going to the hangar, right? You have to get to the bridge and unlock the docking bays. I guess we'll do that. Um... As I alluded to in a previous episode, or directly stated, come on, you, you guys know by now that when I can't do two things at once, which makes playing an RPG and doing something like this a really good idea. Um, yeah, pause, please. Um, we moved, and uh, we moved closer to downtown. It's been really lovely so far. Um, it's been really nice and, um, you know, challenging in a lot of ways, but I'm sure I'm going to get into that when we get into the topic. But for now, I'm going to get into... This dude's metal ass! Are you gonna... <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. The guy just like turns on his shield and he's like, I don't... I'm fairly non-committal about saving my life here. He was waiting his turn. It's ultimately turn-based. Fight them! Fight them in the streets! Fight them in the sheets! Here we go. Just spam flurry. Yeah, beat him up. Be oh, Basil's got a. Oh, Candrus is dead. Damn, these guys are just chucking the nades. Man, just like 
They're literally they're literally doing nothing else but chucking grenades. How funny. Get him. Get him. Get him. Don't wait your turn. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. How is my character good now? This is absurd. Well, he's not going to be too good because he's going to be dead in like 18 seconds here. All right. Not that good. And this... <laughs> <laughs> you think you're doing so well, and then uh, you're not. All right, we'll, we'll do a little minor skip to get back in there, um, so you guys don't have to wait. Dude, these guys, like, won't attack us. Do you guys see this? They're just like, oh, hello. We have our overshields on if you. No. I guess we'll just wait for them to time out. <laughs> this is like the most awkward thing in this whole. Look at this. This is so awkward. Our guys are just like, well, I mean, if you want to fight, then we can fight. Or. I guess we just won't. All right, see ya. Wait, Basley, you're not... Okay, good. <laughs> I thought she'd went back. She was like, uh, speak for yourself, motherfucker. Um, all right, well, I guess this is what we're doing now. Um, at least that got us a little bit farther. Yeah, they basically just chuck grenades like crazy, I guess. I don't know. Is this lead straight? No, This. I guess this bypasses them. Here's a little patrol talking. I guess they have really... Uh, what is it, myopic vision? They can't see, uh, they can't see this far. Stab, stab, stab! I wonder if these are, like, actually the same, um, like, literal enemies as on, um, whatever that first planet was, Talos? Um, I wonder if they're the same, but, like, their overshields are stronger or something, right? That would be kind of, that'd be an interesting way of doing this. Oh, fuck. Wait. Hey. No, no, no. Hey. Come on. Come on. Let's go this way. Let's... Let's let them... Let's let them chuck their grenades. If that's what they want to do, let them do that, you know? We don't live here. We can't just go barging into people's houses expecting not... Expecting for them to not throw cryo grenades at us. You know? It's very... It's just very... It's very uncouth to do that. Jesus Christ, you can just really just walk past everybody in this area, can't you? I guess you're trying to find a way in, huh? Uh, I'll save here. Shoo up! Let's do this. Dark. Oh, good. Dark Jedi's. Man, this is a this is a fucked area, dude. I feel like we are going to spend be spending a lot of time dying. A lot of time. Stasis. I'm here. Fast a lot. When I say stasis, stasis, no? Okay. These guys are getting whopped. They don't really seem like Jedi Masters to me. Yeah. Don't let them get the sustain up. Just do the flurry move. Man, y'all are ass, dude. I can't believe that it is harder to beat a room of five grenade chucking officers than three Jedi in this game. I guess it's because they just, like, they're just hitting you with these AoE type moves. The cryo grenades are pretty strong. It's kind of silly that they gave them so many, but maybe they just didn't want them to be, like, total pushovers and. I don't know, you can't really fault game developers for like messing up the balance a little bit sometimes because there's like so many builds and stuff that go through here. Basil has a level right now, but I'm gonna save it. Oh wait, never mind, I don't save it because she's um bridge storage, here we go. Oh, this is to the bridge. Okay. Damn, I guess we just beat everything. Alright, so. Oh, we are in the bridge. Alright, here's the airlock. Here's airlock. No problem. Didn't work. Can I not bust my way through here? Storage containers? Um nothing too interesting. 
Doesn't seem like it anyways. Storage. What's over here? Parts? Just like a busted droid somewhere? It's not, it's not a really like, it's not even really that utilitarian of like an interior here, you know what I mean? It's really kind of like, um, it's like so sparse that it's actually like kind of useless. They have like all these droids and shit. What was that? Was that a grenade? Do you want to heal everybody, Basila? I could do it, I guess. I miss, I miss Joe Lee. He's so good. Um... All right, what's behind door number three? Just the same, the same shit. All right. Um, oh, we need we need to unlock it. That's right. We need to we need to find wherever the command stuff is. God, don't touch that dial. He's done. Yeah, ouch. Okay, what's on the map? Where have we not been? There's the barracks, corridor, to the bridge, to the bridge storage, to the barracks, central corridor. I guess we can just go right here. I guess this is like the route that we should be taking. What can I do? Maybe. Dude. Dude. Hello? <laughs> Alrighty then. Sure. All right, here's another encounter. But yeah, we moved and um, it's been challenging, I think just because like the, I didn't quite realize the amount that one can spend on furniture. Yeah, here we go. Access system commands. Uh, open all security doors. All right, we should be able to get out of here now. Oh, ooh. Oh, is this another? Oh, a spacesuit. Might need this. Security equipment. Is this like a? I, I really don't remember anything about this area. Thank you. Grenades. More grenades. At least these are things we can sell. But yeah, I didn't realize how much money I could spend on. Um, on furniture until I looked at my checking account and realized it was about half of what I expected it to be. So it's uh, it's been like an interesting challenge. I mean, there's been issues with the house. Like when we moved in, like both of our toilets were broken. Gwen recently broke one. I mean, weirdly, a lot of toilet related issues. Things are broken. They wouldn't flush. The, the seat, um, the top of one of the toilets would like push the handle down so it would be like half filling all day long and driving up our water bill. So that was really annoying. Um, we also had like an insect issue downstairs because there was like, um, the windows weren't entirely sealed. And we used to have, I mean, we still use it now, but we were, um, we had this little like light, UV light catcher for like flying insects when we had um, our plants in our old house. Cause we, I think we had quite a bit of fungus gnats um, on our plants before. And um, it used to be a bit of a problem. I thought that we unlocked this, but maybe we didn't. Oh, because I thought we, okay, whatever. Um, I guess we'll just search far and wide. Um, we're really doing this. They're literally just sitting here. Hey, come on. That's a, that's pretty rude. That's pretty rude. To just attack Karth like this. It, it bros! Oh. What are you doing? Oh my god. Alright. Bastila. Your job is to just stasis everybody. What okay. Okay. Another stasis. You're gonna stasis him. All right. I'm gonna go over here and flurry this guy. And you're gonna um, snipe shot him or whatever. What? And we're gonna just kind of wing it from there. Can you kill him, like dude? That. Please. Thank you. All right, now you're gonna CC everybody else, all right? Forget all this shit, stasis and stasis. 
And then I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna kill this guy. And we're gonna go one by one until they're all dead. Because that is how you play this game. Okay, because otherwise, they're just going to keep chucking grenades at us forever. No, not attack and do that. Just, no. Stasis. Okay, wh whatever. There you go. Good job. Um, and you are going to just shoot at whoever big dog over there is shooting at, okay? Whoever, whoever it is, just keep shooting at him. Good job. All right. And we're going to shoot at this guy. You are going to stab him. You have one job. Oh, whoops. What? No, not right now. I'm already in. Okay, I'm stuck in the menu. All right, perfect. Um, treat injury. Great. Awareness. I don't care about anything else. Feats. Um. Hmm. I think dueling's probably good for her because it helps her with like she's only using she's like defensive so. Ooh, stasis field. That's actually pretty good. Okay, well, you know stasis field, so do that shit. Forget all this. Do stasis field. And then I'm gonna just keep stabbing. Oh, there oh yes. Now that's some useful shit right there. Yeah. Good night, mobs. That was pretty broken. It's like kill, kill, like, uh, what is it, destroy droid that Juhani has? Just this utterly insane force ability. Yeah. That wasn't so bad once you, like, actually go through and disable everybody. One by one here. Um, but yeah, we enjoy living in this new area over by the city. I mean, I've spent quite a bit of time down around the whole Mills, Ivanhoe area, and, um... You know, we were living by UCF for a really long time, and, and we had outgrown that area a long time ago. Um, but it's nice to be, because I'm like, I'm very associated, or like very, um, ooh, it's spicy. Um, very associated and very like knowledgeable about all the things like the restaurants and the event spaces and what's where and I've spent a lot of time down here so it's kind of nice to just be down yes. here and um, like anytime anybody wants to do something you're like close you know like sure. before I'd like oh let's go get something to eat oh let's go see a show oh let's go like uh, let's go to this event it's always it was like a 30 minute drive every time we did it and um, and it never bothered me because I'm I actually love driving it's one of like my weird things, I guess. A lot of people don't like driving, weirdly. Like even people, I have a lot of friends who are like gearheads, like who love cars, and most of them don't like driving. And the irony too is that a lot of the like, a lot of the like cars, I guess, that people really like who are into cars, they're not that fun or comfortable to drive in. Like, what is it? My buddy Alex has like a Charger or something. Alex has been on the show before. Um, he has like a charger or something and um the field of like the the vision on the the uh through the front window god i can't come up with a word right now is like nothing like it's like trying to look through a mirror like through a clear window even that's like not in front of you but like this so you have like no space to see and it's like reasonably spacious but i don't know i I feel like, uh, uh, I feel like, um, dude, smooth. Come on, guys. Get the fuck out of my way. Ready? Um, I feel like it's just not like that what? great objectively. Like, it's just good for a sports car. It's not good 
space-wise, objectively. Um, so I don't really get the appeal. Also, like with the you know me thinking about income and money and budgeting because we did just move and we did just spend a bunch of money. Um, is this where I'm supposed to be? I don't know. Two bridge, elevator. Okay, so do I? I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do here. Elevator corridor? Is there another thing down here? Um, you have to, like, having to use, like, synthetic oil on your car all the time, too. It's, like, just such a bitch, you know? Um, like, you, you waste so much money. And then I have friends who have, like, rentals and they have sports cars. And then it's like, dude, you're, you're wasting all this money. It's not even your car. Like, a car is, like, not that expensive to get. I have buddies. I have friends who have car payments that are like $500 a month just so they can drive X car that they shouldn't have bought. And it's like, dude, you got a car payment and you have like student loans and you have, uh, I mean, most of the people who have this shit aren't even like really paying off their student loans, but you know, you have a car payment and you have student loans and you have, you're making like less than a hundred thousand dollars and you're not living with like three or four people and you live outside of Florida where everything is like more expensive. What are you doing, man? Watch all that income go down the drain. It's so sad. Ah, oh. you must find another way. It didn't work. If only I had little robot, dude. I guess they wanted, I guess this would have been a good time to use the robot guy, but the thing is, if we would have gotten into combat, which we did, we would have just been fucked. Oh, this is, I guess this goes to the bridge? I guess I just found it. Oh, this is the airlock. No problem. Oh, this is so annoying. Where am I supposed to go? All right, guys, I'll cut forward again. Sorry for that. All right, and we're back. Um, it turns out that the spacesuit that I had counts as three spacesuits. Unlike in the other section where you have the water suits or whatever. And, um... Candace has no fucking life, so we have to fight somebody at the end of this. We're just gonna die. But, um... It counts as three spacesuits, and, um... I had it in another character's inventory, and it didn't count for the character I tried to interact with the door's inventory. Um... Which seems like a little bit... I don't know, uh, different than, than how other segments in the game had gone so far, so, I don't know, it was kind of frustrating. Also, Bastila, like, decided that she was going to stop following the rest of the group at a certain amount of time, um, while I was running around, and then we got totally wiped because we couldn't just spam her, like, mass stasis ability that I got, so, that was, uh, really fucking annoying, so, but anyways, uh, we are here to unlock this outer door, and I... Odds on, we are going to have to fight somebody, like, literally as soon as we walk through here, so, let's see. Alright, I bet you, at least we have a second to, like, heal Karth up, at least. For better or worse. He's pretty useless. I honestly don't even need him. When we beat the game, like, on the last area, there will be no blaster idiots in the group. I promise you that. Alright, let's see. Oh, wh wait, what? We were facing the door? Oh my god, come on, game. Come on, game, from <clears throat> when I was maybe nine years old. Come on, come on, you can do it. Outer door, right? No? Okay, doing it again! Alright. Well, guys, if you can believe it, I have a college degree. And people have said that I am... ...stupid before. So let's see, um, I'm gonna save, so we don't have to do all that stupidity again. I'm sure we're gonna get, come, what is, what is, no, what is going on? And then of course, is anyone surprised? What? No one has anything equipped, did you guys see this? Hello? Why do they unequip their weapons? What the fuck is this? 
good game. Ah, uh, I don't even remember like Mandalorian heavy pistol, I guess. I know mine is the double bladed lightsaber. How silly. Please use your fucking ability, bitch. Come on. I'm here. No. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do this. I want you to do it and I want you to it to do something when you do it. Thank you. And they're like all conveniently spaced far enough to where like I can't even hit everybody. Go! Mm. Listen to me! You can like, you guys can like see what is happening here, you know? Just... Did it, did it just not do anything? Did it just not, did it just not? You're gonna die, but... Thank you. Oh my god. Yes. Good. Good, hey, you did something on your own that wasn't like totally useless. This Smith and Cross is like really good. It's very bananas. That might be like a new top tier rum for me. Really yummy stuff. Much better than like um, a uh, Cuban or a Puerto Rican rum there. Cuban would be like what, Havana Club or um, I can't, there's another popular Cuban one I'm not thinking of. Don Q is Puerto Rican, I'm pretty sure. Rums are different. We'll get into this when, um, we'll get into this when, uh, when we do an episode about drinks, which I'm sure we will, because it's a, a nice hobby I've kind of adopted this year, but, I mean, I, I mean, I've, we've mostly been drinking mocktails, actually, because Gwen is been having some uh, some health things and we didn't want to drink through that whole time so we drank a lot of um, gluten-free non-alcoholic beer and like mocktail stuff and I find the non-alcoholic beer stuff to be like really good and like the mocktail stuff to be kind of hit or miss like I'm very particular about my drinks anyways so but yeah we're probably gonna want to just sit here and heal for a second my I can expend my for my force power for healing because I really don't use it that much but yeah, um, I feel like this is gonna be like a big fight because, you know, long hallway, whatever. So, Master Speed, Force Armor, um, and then Bastila, Energy Resistance, Knight Valor, Knight Speed, Force Shield. All right, so then I switch back over here I save again, and we'll see how this goes. What? Hello? Oh, there we go. Oh, well, good thing, right? Hopefully all these buffs persist and I don't just have, like, no force. We'll see. Very resourceful. I assume you had some part in this. You learned your lessons well from me. The only thing you taught me was betrayal and death, so don't be a fool. Oh yeah, you don't like that I'm guy. You and your Mr. Furry Hat. A chance to surrender, a chance to live. Darth Malak himself is on his way. He'll be arriving any moment. He speaks the truth, Karth. I can feel the, the Dork Lord's presence. Malak will destroy you. But if you throw down your weapons now, I will ask my master to be merciful. I've seen enough of Sith mercy. You always did like to do things the hard way. <clears throat> Lord Malak would have preferred live prisoners, but corpses will have to do. Oh, so scary. Much scary. Yeah, it didn't persist, but whatever. Let's see how hard they are first. Shut up. I said. Shut up. Oh, there are dudes by the door. Yes. Just, just keep everybody stunned. Oh, they literally are all stunned. You can just attack them if you want while you're waiting. <laughs> while we're waiting to, sure. to mash them up. And 
Oh, just once. Once will be good enough. Yes. No, that's useless. Just keep stasising them. There's like no point in doing anything else. And then I'm just gonna spam sure. flurry. That's it. Down you go. Spam McFlurry. Here we go. Oh man, is it even a game anymore? I'm just kill the mobs. Rumble. Don't let him kick you in the jaw like that. Oh god, she's got like no force left, huh? And Karth is just like doing something over there. Whatever. He's dead now. Come on. Just kill him! Thank you, god. Here, I'll heal you up, Basila. I'll play the cleric. How about that? God, she's getting wrecked, dude. Yes. Good lord. Why does he have so much fucking health? There you go. Yeah, how do you like that? How do you like that? How do you like that? Yeah, you lost. Nice. Koth. Koth. Koth! The Admiral. He's still alive. It's time to finish this. No, Karth! Don't give in to your hatred. Um. Yeah, we just gotta leave, dude. Don't you understand what this man has done to my life? Do you know the pain he's brought me? Killing him won't ease the pain, Karth. Do not become what you despise. And the ship's gonna blow up, so... Must tell you... Must tell you something. Come closer. Your face you're making doesn't really match what you're telling me. He's like... What is that? Okay, he's dead. Your family's avenged. Can we get out of here now? Basil, it is true, isn't it? And, and you knew. You and the whole damn Jedi Council, you knew the whole time. Karth, it's not what you think. We had no other choice. Please, you don't understand. So make me understand. What are you guys talking about? Not here, Karth. Please, there's no time. Malak is coming. This isn't the place. Please, Karth, I'm asking you to trust me for just a little while longer. Yeah, can we not, like, fight this dude now? Okay, I'll trust you, Bastila, but as soon as we're off this ship, I expect some answers. Of course, Karth. As soon as we get to the Ebonhawk, I'll explain everything. Of course. Of course, as soon as we get there. But only when we get there, if we get there. Oh, this fucking boring-ass sequence is finally done. Um... We go. Oh, look, it's the Grenadier. I'm here. It's a good thing that boss fight wasn't that hard. What? Na, 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 na. No, dude, this guy. This guy, okay? This guy. Thank you. I love how the idea that there is like a grenader position in like the military ranks of the Sith like fleet or command or whatever. Do we gotta like, oh I guess we gotta do the spacewalk again? I guess? What's in these lockers? Lots of good shit. I guess this was stuff for the boss fight, huh? 
case you were just totally terrible, which I have been for most of this game. Airlock. No problem. Oh. What can I do? He goes, no problem. Didn't work. <laughs> All right. That's that's what I'm gonna do for like every single thing that I know I'm shit at in the future. Like <laughs> they're gonna be like, uh, hey, can you uh, file these taxes with the uh, code thirty six, please? And I'll be like, no problem. And then I'll come back like three hours later, like didn't work. <laughs> No problem. I got no problem, but it didn't work. Oh, man. Look at this super flat-ass JPEG. Can we find a seam in here while we're walking? There is the seam. See it over there? It's, it's right on the corner. They put it next to the sun. It's right there. It's running from here. You can see it that this is a square box. Uh, can I walk over here? Is there a floor? Probably not. Gotta look for the seams, man. It's an old ass game. They were much worse with this shit back then. Alright. Oh, goody, but we also don't have weapons equipped. Again, because that was just a brilliant feature of this game. That all of your armor and stuff stays equipped, but your weapons de-equip. But Okay, everybody... Okay, but my main character's weapons... This has to be a bug. This is so stupid. Whatever, it's not the biggest thing. Mando heavy pistol, right? What a terrible show, The Mandalorian. Sure. I haven't seen season two, but I know, like, most of the things that happen in it. Is this, like, a quick skip to the command deck or something? I know like most of the things that happen in it and um I guess we go to the elevators, huh? Um it's just all cameos, man. It's like such a fucking Star Wars y thing to do, you know? Like to just Oh, you were doing this again, huh? Um I'm here. It's such a Star Wars y ass thing to do to like just fill the game, like fill the show, like Take a show that was like by definition trying to do something smaller and more intimate and more like, t you know, less grandiose in Star Wars. And like, I shit you not, they have like Let's one go. public like stakeholder meeting and they're like, guys, you're not, you're not fucking sucking out the milk from the teat of Star Wars enough. You gotta really grind it out, rip, you know, peel, peel the rind for the zest, squeeze it. You know, compost the remains. If if Ahsoka Tano and Boba Fett and Luke Skywalker and fucking uh, you know people from the Clone Wars, the fucking other random Mandalorian girl aren't in it, then it's not a good show and people won't watch it. It's literally like the same thing they did with the last Star Wars movie that everybody hated, and everybody loves this shit all over again. It's just oh. You are trying to protect the child? Well, I don't want the child. But here, this other character from other movies might. Who's totally gonna be a good guy, even though they're bad, or like... You know, like Boba Fett, right? Like, Boba Fett is like the most, like, generic, like, whack-ass goon ever. But of course they make him into this, like, badass, even though the Fets have never done anything cool ever. Like I've already talked about. You have to get to oh the oh I have to get to the bridge first. Wait, bruh. Do I have? Did I have to like? Come on, dude. Did I have to like unlock something when I was in that other room? Did I really? All right, I'll I'll cut forward, guys. I'm here. Yes, what's on your mind? Oh! You got it. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait a minute. <laughs> what's on your mind? <laughs> what's on your mind? Gets blown up. You got it. <laughs> Just fucking dies. 
Oh my god. All right. I just I'll probably edit that in just so uh just so you guys can see it. All right, we are back. I think we made it here. And I think we can go to the hangar now. Perfect. I yeah, I literally just forgot to open a thing when I left that room. It was really fucking annoying. It's Kandra. <clears throat> we took care of the guards. We're inside the Evan Hawk and all systems are go. As soon as you guys join us, we can get out of here. Let's go. Let's go, dude. But wait. There's even more mobs. Why wouldn't there be? Why wouldn't there be? Yes. Did you really just miss? Oh, it it like lagged. Did you see that? He like he got killed and then it took him a second. He's like, "Damn, I died that quick." All right, hold on. I'm not I'm not prepared to do this yet. Give me a second. He's like, "All right. Do I look good?" Uh uh I just had to make sure my delivery was on point, sorry. Is there anything in this door? What's behind door number- ooh, Super Dark Jedi. Time to get I'm fucked here. up. Ah, now that's not cool. Do it again. Yeah, not so hot now, huh? Yes? Kill like that. How'd you like that? Come on, yes. Down you go. Nice. Don't care. I don't care about the loot. I just want to get out. Yes. Oh my God. What is going on, man? What can I do? Oh shit! We got all of them with that one. This move is completely broken. Yes. Yet another force ability that is just so silly for crowd control. Kill the Jedi. Invisible cursor. All right, we're doing this now. Nice. Shubidi do, shubada do, shubu ba 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 Endless mobs. Do da da do. No, stop it. I will loot them. All right. Oh my God, they had a med pack. Hate having to, this area is so fucking annoying, dude. Good thing I have master speed. At least I can like sprint through some some of these areas. It's Malik. It's Malarkey. Darth Malik. Darth Melnick. <laughs> I hope you weren't thinking of leaving so soon, Bastila. I've spent far too much energy hunting down you and your companions to let you get away from me now. Besides, I had to see for myself if it was true. Even now, I can hardly believe my eyes. Tell me, why did the Jedi spare you? Is it vengeance you seek at this reunion? Uh, what are you talking about, hombre? I'm just a dude that uh, stuns things and then kills them. <laughs> you mean you don't know? You don't know? <laughs> and you still haven't figured kick, it out. Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> how long you would have stayed blind to the truth? Surely some of what you once were must have surfaced by now. Even the combined power of the Jedi Council couldn't keep your true identity. I guess they could, I don't know. The Jedi oh, time to edit this in. Killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. The Council would not normally accept an adult for training, but this is a special case. 
They say the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. Tatooine. Kashyyyk. Manan. Korriban. I haven't been to Korriban. Revan visited <clears throat> each of these worlds searching for clues to reveal the hidden location of the Starforge. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Starforge could lead you down an all too familiar path. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause? To use their own knowledge against them? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! You're Revan, guys. If you didn't figure this out, you are Revan. You are... Yeah. You are Darth Revan, and somehow you, uh... You, you un-Darth Revan. You got beat up, and then they mind-wiped you, and then tried to use you to find the star maps, because you'd already been there. And you had crazy eyes when you were Darth Revan and never used chapstick. There is no chapstick on Korriban. There is no chapstick in the whole galaxy. Except for the Outer Rim. That's why, that's why everybody always leaves for the Outer Rim when they're leaving the franchise. Moisturizer and skin protection. My skin's been terrible lately, man. I've been having this, um... I get this like fungus thing on my face occasionally. Quite like what Darth Malak has. That's why he wears the weird like lower jaw thing. And know that I have taken your place. Yeah, I've never had like acne like ever in my life. I've always had like clear skin, but I think like all the creams and stuff have been really like messing up my forehead. I'm Darth Revan! How is this possible? You do not yet remember, Revan. The Jedi set a trap. They lured us into battle against a small Republic fleet. During the attack, a team of Jedi Knights boarded your ship. The Jedi strike team captured you, and the Council used the Force to reprogram your mind. They wiped away your identity and turned you against your own followers. Even my extensive knowledge of Kahlua-based recipes? I'll have to learn them all over again! No, my drinks are ass. They're all watery. Um. Uh, how do they capture someone as powerful as Revan? I helped them, Revan. I always knew that one day the title of Dark Lord would be mine. When the Jedi strike would be mine. Revan, I saw my day had come. I ordered my own ships to fire on your bridge. I thought I could destroy all my enemies with a single glorious victory. I never dreamed that Jedi would take you alive from the wreck. He's like very unintimidating for a Dark Lord, right? I always thought Malak's design was lame. The Jedi are fools. They do not believe in executing prisoners. Originally, I assumed you had died in the battle. Imagine my surprise when I found out you were still alive, Revan. He's got a little bit of like Wolverine flair in his voice, like not necessarily the sound, but like the way he talks. He's like, I wouldn't. It's, even, it's not even Wolverine. It's like Snake. It's like, I would never have imagined you would have died in the battle. This is Snake, Colonel. Darth Revan, I am your apprentice and I fired on your ships. Wow. Uh... All right. You must have seen flashes of your old life in your No, I mean I believe it, dude. I'm just I'm not not getting the dialogue option yet, so we can just keep chatting until I get it, man. you must remember the We're just chilling, dude. Just relax. It's a reunion. It's true. I was part of the team sent to capture Revan, to capture you. When Malak fired on the ship, you were badly injured. We thought you were dead. Your mind was destroyed, but I used the force to preserve the flicker of life in your body. I brought you to the Jedi Council. 
they were the ones who healed your damaged mind. Where do my memories come from? The Jedi Council didn't restore your wounded mind, Revan. They merely programmed it with a new identity. One loyal I'm trying to make you a slave. They tried to make you their slave. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, that's cool. Forgiveness, Revan. <laughs> you are weak. I was right to betray you. You are not fit to rule the Sith. If your build is stronger, you can you can rule the Sith. I'm just telling you, I'll probably whoop your ass either way. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm just saying. Once I get these mods, we're gonna see what's under that little uh that little metal goatee you got going down there. Once I defeat you in combat, no one will. You seem to forget that I'm still here, but dude. And my skin's more moisturized. I, won't make the same I have the power of H2O. To finish this alone in the ancient Sith tradition. Master versus... Okay. Oh, dude, are you really gonna fucking do this? Just spam Master Flurry. He's got cool moves, at least. Dude, come on. That's just rude. Whoa! Whoa! I'm running away. I guess I'll just wait here. Are they gonna like remain stasis, I suppose? <clears throat> hey guys. Nothing? Nothing? He's got a good ass stasis, look at that. Well, if I have to use uh, force powers on the next one, we'll see. Hmm? How about this one? It's like a goofy ass maze? Are you serious? Oh my god. This fucking Gallagher bullshit going on here. This is so silly. What's behind door number one? Was this even in the original game? I don't remember. Why is this a thing? Why is this a thing that's in the game? He's like, now you must find me in this maze where I don't have any other goons and I'm not actually, I'm just waiting. I'm just kind of hanging out. Hello? Is he in this room? Well, come here! Maybe he's stronger now? Yeah. Hey, come on, dude. Oh, he said lightsabers only. Stop. Stop. Ooh. No. Over, Malak. Your friends do not give up easily, Riven. You always could inspire loyalty. But even the three of you together cannot stand against my power. For the Jedi! My power. Ow! Oh, old Malakoff, you two get out of here. <clears throat> Find the Star Forge. No, no Bastila, he's too strong. No! <laughs> the so can't get funny. Past. Come on, we have to get to the Ebon Hawk. All right, yeah, let's leave her. Bastila doesn't stand a chance against Malak, but we can't help her. Not here. We have to get off this ship, and Bastila sacrificed herself so we could get away. We can't let her. All right, that sounds good. Um. To the to the hangar, right? Where are we going? 
Is this the way else? <laughs> it's like, Basila, Basila, wait. No! We have to leave. <laughs> Basila, wait. No! We have to leave. No! 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 It's just so stupid. <sighs> oh, sorry, guys. I, I keep like getting up and down in my chair because I haven't figured out. Uh, so this is the first episode that we've recorded in the new house. And um, I haven't quite figured out everything like perfectly yet, like the height of the mic as well. And I feel like I'm almost like a little bit too low here. So I tried to sit up a little bit in the chair. Um, like on my ankle, and it, it just is not fun for several hours, so unsurprisingly, I guess. Oh no! Mini games! Oh, cool. Wait. Yeah. Hello? Are you. Stop. There you go. <laughs> I gotta really increase my sensitivity for this one, huh? Hello? 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 Oh, there you are. Did I get him? Yeah, there we go. Yay! Can you even lose those? Is it even possible? I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Darth Malak was most displeased when he heard of your... That's what I like the Dark Jedi say. Dark Malak. What happened on that ship? <laughs> you ran into Malak. Put on some fucking clothes, dude. You sacrificed herself so we could get away. You mean she's... she's dead? Nah, Malak won't kill her. Don't be foolish. He'll want to use her battle meditation against the Republic. Turn her to the dark side and the Sith will always be victorious. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta go get the Star Forge, guys. Two? Not so fast. We've got a bigger issue to deal with here. They deserve to know the truth about you. Do you want to tell them what Malik said, or should I? I'll tell them. I'm Darth Revan. I don't Revan? care. What, what are you talking about? Is this some kind of a joke? No, it's no joke. The Jedi Council captured Revan and erased the Dark Lord's mind, programming in a new identity. Saul this was like so much more shocking when I played this game when I was a kid. I was just You're like... Darth Revan? This is... This is big. Do you... Do you remember anything about being the Dark Lord? I wore a lot of black, and my skin was terrible. Also, my eyes were as sexy as fuck. They were like, I was a black dude with bright eyes. My modeling career was great, but uh, they really had to do a lot of that, um, <clears throat> oh, I can't remember, high frequency separation on my skin in post. So I wasn't the most popular amongst the uh, editing crowd. And so the lies begin. It was obvious you remembered something back there when Malak confronted you with the truth. Might have only been small pieces, but there was something there. Just a few flashes. That's it. Nothing more? Then I don't think there's a problem. It seems to me that if you don't really remember anything about being Revan, then it doesn't really Candace, matter. Candace, you got something to say? You are who you are now, right? Of course it still matters. How do we know more memories won't come flooding back? How do we know Revan won't suddenly turn on us? The whole time we've been chasing after Malak, we've had his old Sith Master right at our side, listening to our secrets, hearing our plans. I'm Taco Bell. I've always been Taco Bell. Even if my menu was completely changed. I don't see the Sith Lord. Oddly yet. relevant, right? I see Taco Bell really did change their entire menu. That's why a lot of people aren't so hot on them anymore. Malik's the one who tried to I've never liked Paris. Taco Bell, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I agree with mission. I swore life debt to the person you are, not to the person you were. Big Z and I will stick by you. We owe you our lives. We won't desert you now. 
How can you say that, Mission? The Sith bombed my homeworld, Revan took away my family, and destroyed my life. Everyone knows it was Malak who gave the order to attack your people, Karth. You can't blame Revan for that. I suppose you've proven yourself to be a friend of the Republic by your actions so far, Revan. But can I trust you? Can any of us? What do you think? What do you think, HG 47 Commentary. I am experiencing something unusual, Master. What's happening? Answer. My programming is activating my deleted memory core. I believe I have a a homing system that is restoring it, Master. What's that? Observation. My homing system is a function of my assassination protocols, that which I told you had been deactivated. This system was not. It seems that the homing system deliberately restores my deleted memory core upon... So when you played the game originally, you could learn this early if you got, if you repaired HK-47, you could learn this before you went to, um, before this whole bullshit happens. So that's how I did in my game, because I really liked HK-47. I just haven't been playing him in this run because he sucks. Like, combat-wise. Sith protocols maintain that all droid knowledge be deleted before assassination missions and restored upon return. I have returned to you, <clears throat> and my full functionality is now under your personal command. It is a distinct pleasure to see you again, Master. Commentary. I believe I have served you well in the past, Master, and will continue to do so for as long as you have need of me. Wow. What are the chances of that happening? Remember, we're talking about the Force here. At this point, Malak himself could drop out of the sky, and I wouldn't bat an eyelash. Good point. What do you think, Candy? You defeated the Mandalore clans in the war, Revan. <clears throat> you were the only one in the galaxy who could best us. We had never met one like you before, and never since. How can you even ask if I'll follow you? Whatever you're fighting, it will be worthy of my skill. I'm your man until the end, Revan. No matter how this plays out. What about you, T3? What about you, Jolie? What about me? I already knew who you were, though it wasn't my place <laughs> to tell you. Better off that you know, if you ask me. That's not what I'm talking about, Jolie. I'm talking about why aren't you wearing any clothes? Do what you have to do, and I'll help if I can. You can help by putting on some fucking clothes, dude. Thanks, buddy. I knew the little guy would come through for you. Droids don't hold grudges. Well, the others seem to trust you. And I don't see any other way that we can stop the Sith. And I suppose that Malak is the real enemy here. I really don't have any other choice, do I? Nope. I want to believe you. You've proven yourself time and time again during our mission, but this is a little much for me to wrap my mind around. You have to try. For old Bastila. This must be even more of a shock to you. <clears throat> I don't know how you even keep going. I guess we both just have to find a way to push forward. I keep going. I won't let my cuz it's a video game and I really don't have a choice for this mission. But don't forget, I've sworn an oath to defend the Republic. As long as this mission stays on course, I'll stick with you. But I won't let you betray the Republic under any circumstances. So I guess that's it then. We keep going. We've still got one more star map to uncover if we're going to find that Star Forge and save Basila. So let's do it before it's too late. Ooh. -hoo. It's a weird poppin'. Oh, ooh, ooh. Weird dreams again. And green, unflattering lights on my face. My in-game face. Not my real face. H, what the fuck? Oh, it, 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 keep, it keeps closing the window for the game for me. All right, here's Corban. The final star map. The final frontier. Why did she fucking faded away? Did you guys see that? What the hell was that? 
What the fuck? I got some levels here. Let's see. Uh, treat injury. Feats. Improved two weapon. Wait, it's two weapon fighting, right? I just want master two weapon fighting. Powers. <clears throat> Dominate mind for the persuades. Sounds good. All right, let's. Uh, where's the way out of this ship? Ugh. <clears throat> out into the left. Hmm. Well, I just want to see the outside. So we're gonna have a change of scenery here. Who are we gonna bring? Let's bring Candy and uh, Jolie. I don't think we've done this group yet. Nice. We are in some kind of terminal here. I just don't wanna trigger any dialogue without realizing it. It concerns the Dark Lord of the Sith. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm the Dark Lord of the Sith, just so you know. Yes, human, I know. That's why I approached you. Who are you? My name is Zygram. I'm a businessman. I and my partner deal in rare items of extraordinary value and power. You're with the exchange. No, we're not. We're independent operators, though often our transactions are involved with the exchange. We've always done business with the owner of the Abenhawk, Davit Kang, but most recently, Ahita, Othar, Foral Axis, but then we were reluctant to approach you. We have no ties, which was a problem. Even worse, you were a Jedi, not the sort of person we normally associate with. Get to the point, how do you know my identity? Yeah, they know I'm Darth Revan. How does this involve you? Are you going to give these items to me? Just go to the canten cantina in Dreshte. There's a Rodian named Mika Doran. I'll go check it out. Thanks, Zyagrum. All right. Well, that was something. All right. So I guess that is... Uh, God, they're like evaporating here. Same as uh, Basila. So I guess this leads us into... Not our topic here. Is this really going to keep happening? Uh, excuse me, sir. I realize that ah, you're the so uh, Dark Lord of the Sith. It has been quite a long time. Joggy? Do you know him? He... He was a warrior under my command up to the Battle of Althir. But I thought... You thought I was dead, didn't you? You thought all of us that you had set on that attack had perished. You sent us to die and... Did you, like, teleport, homie? ...while you directed your forces elsewhere. You broke from the battle plan and let us die for it. You lived, though. I alone realized what was happening and managed to escape the trap before it closed. The trap he set for his own men. I... I did what was prudent at the time. If I had not done it, the battle would have... The battle would have been won anyway. I am tired of your excuses, Candorous. I have spent years tracking you down since the clans were banished, and I will not rest until I've had my vengeance. What are you gonna do? I challenge you, Candorous. I challenge you to fight the fight you fled that day above Althir, in the doomed seas of Tatooine. I will be waiting for you. I have spread the news of the challenge since I learned you had landed on this world. All the surviving Mandalorian clans know of what I do here, and that we shall meet on Tatooine to settle this debt of vengeance once and for all. If you fail to meet me, he sounds like a D and D bad guy. All honor and forever cast out of our society. It will be you and me <clears throat> alone in the doomed seas of Tatooine. 
a final battle that can only end in death. I shall be waiting for you there, Kendris. It's a lot to take in, man. <laughs> Jolie, are you sure you don't want to put some pants on? All right, so if there is nothing else, we can finally get onto our topic, which is the end of the year extravaganza 2020. And uh, it was funny, before I watched this, I watched my 2019 episode um, that I recorded about a year ago with that within it had like my hopes and forecasts and expectations for the next year. And I was very optimistic. I'd had a very good year, you know, got a new job, got all this good stuff, had a lot of fun. And I'm sitting here like, you know, a year in the future, just kind of like, you know, chilling back, like laughing, like, dude, you got no fucking idea what's going to happen. And really like, Nobody had any idea, you know what I mean? Like nobody had any kind of concept as to what this year was actually going to entail. What it entailed was primarily, and there were lots of things that sucked this year outside of this, was COVID, COVID-19, the Chinese wet market virus that has been in America since the end of February, basically. Um, you know, it came... We're still dealing with it. Thank God there's a vaccine out. Austin's had it because he's like a hospital worker, first responder, definition, sanction, whatever. I don't know. Um, but at least there are finally some ways of dealing with this available, even though there's like some new British mutation that like people are like iffy about, well, is it more fatal? Well, it seems to be more like uh, contagious. Well, maybe the vi vaccines will work. So, dude, likely I could be doing this shit again, like, next year, which would fucking blow. And you can imagine all the political skirmishes about COVID and the political skirmishes this year have been truly epic. Will be even worse if, uh, if COVID goes into next year. So, politics is the really, to me, the, the next big one. I almost tie in BLM with this because they become political issues as much as they shouldn't have. Um, the end of the year was very much uh, populated with divisive grandstanding between Republicans and Democrats about who the next president is going to be, followed by Biden beating Trump, a lot of people accusing Biden of manipulating the election kind of in a hilariously overbearing way that doesn't seem possible at all, like Man, if somebody loses like four or five states, then all of them are because of mail-in voter fraud, even though like the military has been doing this shit for forever. And there are isolated cases of voter fraud, sure, but not enough to like completely overturn an election, right? Even in the most like, if we're just being like liberal with the idea of how many fraudulent votes there could have been, it doesn't make any fucking sense, so... Yeah, BLM ties into this. That was a huge thing. Black Lives Matter. Um, and BLM became another political issue because of, like, r protests versus rioting versus media coverage of just riots. I was in the walking protests in Orlando. I saw literally no violence at all. The police were all there. Nobody was doing anything. It was very calm. And then later on, the, on uh, Twitter, I saw a cop tackling some dude who was instigating shit after curfew uh, in an area where there wasn't a protest. And then, of course, that gets like, uh, you know, there that becomes like a, a big signal fire and everybody starts getting pissed. So it's just like this endlessly annoying situation. But I feel very strongly about BLM, as I've said. I think it's insanely ridiculous that a police officer could literally murder you for like a petty crime if you're from a bad area and are likely black or another minority. And then like their boss would be like, oh, we reviewed you and it doesn't matter that you killed that guy. So uh, get moving. Go out there and be the best man you can be. Don't let it get you down. <laughs> so uh, yeah, fucking ridiculous. I've always thought that's fucking ridiculous. And, um, and again, politics, you know, we moved to this new area and I see the Trump flags even though like the election was already awarded to Biden, like outside, like, you know, people are just, it's very divided now. And even like Sean and uh, Najee, uh, Sean moved out and we'll get to that, uh, moved out to Colorado. And um, 
he came back with Najee because Najee visited and they both flew back and they had an Uber driver that was like some 76 year old hyper conservative was like, oh, there's going to be big, you know, big things next year. And I'm so glad in Florida that they let you shoot all those Antifa and BLM people. It's just it's just crazy, man. People are just so wild. But I mean, even even past that, even the macro level stuff that that sucked for everybody, there's been all these individual things that sucked like on the on the national i mean the country level right like kobe bryant died in that plane crash or, or sorry not the plane crash it was a helicopter um kobe died in that helicopter crash black panther had like this secret long-term battle with cancer that he succumbed to unfortunately ruth bader ginsburg died and that became another political flashpoint um a lot of people just kicked the bucket this year and it was pretty terrible but um what else happened? California had those big wildfires. I think I'm pretty sure they were pretty historic wildfires. Like, And then Trump was like, oh, forest management. That's the reason why. Nothing to do with climate change. Just, you know, forest management. There's too many leaves on the ground. Um, I mean, to some extent, that's true. But to, to say that, like, that's why there's such a high prevalence, I don't know. Just seems ridiculous. Um, and then, you know, like the, the Hong Kong still fighting for their independence stuff. People mostly forgot about that, but that's really sad. I always feel bad when I think about that stuff because I always think about like Tiananmen Square and how like the Chinese people have wanted democracy for so long and wanted like independence and they've always failed in their fight for it. And it's just so terrible. I hate it. It really rubs me the wrong way. And then... Um, and then India with the uh, farmers protests, which is not that well covered... It is covered in the social media circles that I run in, but I'm fairly niche in my social media usage. So, yeah, just farmers not being paid fair wages in India, and they produce a lot of products and they're not compensated fairly. So these are all the things that made 2020 suck on a very visible level to everybody. But then there's also, like, the way it sucked specifically for me. And I don't think my story is, like, unique. I don't even think it's that bad in relative to everybody. I mean... I was lucky enough that my job isn't affected at all. I mean, I'm a telecommuter for a big defense contractor. It's not like it's not like when COVID happens, they're not going to want the military anymore, especially in a conservative, uh, you know, when the conservative party is, is in power. Um, so, yeah, I just kept working. You know, they had to increase their infrastructure to accommodate more people telecommunicate, uh, telecommuting and server. There was a few server issues, but not really. Nothing really too major. And I know, like... A lot of other people had to go telecommute this year, but it kind of really mostly sucked for me because I was like so excited to like really fucking kick this year's ass. And I had so many things planned, like Doug was going to get married in Portugal and we had planned this big vacation around it. And we had another marriage out in um, some island outside of uh, Seattle and my cousin Cameron, who's been on the show, was going to get married this year. And so we basically had a travel itinerary basically planned around marriages. And I was going to be an extra in a movie and I was going to go do that dinosaur dig thing. And then me and Gwen were going to go look at the stars because it was some area that has like very little light pollution out there. And I was doing really good. I lost like I lost like 35 pounds in like three months or whatever. But then like now I've basically like gained like 15 pounds back because I'm like what the hell is the point I'm not it's actually probably been worse than 15 pounds because I haven't really been lifting weights to maintain muscle but I have just gotten fatter you know it just is what it is I don't it doesn't really bother me weirdly it's just we're not doing anything like we're not going anywhere we're not trying to look good for anybody so what's the damn point you know I have been exercising just to let you know but not I haven't been dieting and I haven't been like exercising to the extent to get back to that point so it just sucks because everything closed. You know, I was doing so well. I was working out a lot. I, I was going and doing personal training with the basketball guy. It was like my game was really improving. And then like, you know, COVID hits. I was at a music festival when COVID hit initially. I was out seeing uh, Blood Orange at, at the Oki Festival. I just went and bought the ticket on a whim because it was within my budget. And I was like on schedule. I remember I had that schedule episode of, like early in the year and Man, I was like on top of shit. I was feeling good about work, like everything. And uh, and then COVID happens and it's like, oh, the courts are closed and all the restaurants you like are closed and everyone is fucking going insane at Publix and uh, there's no toilet paper and there's no like meat or like a lot of the things you might like to eat just don't exist anymore because the, the demand just spiked before the supply could catch up. And... Um, it just sucked, you know, and I mean, 
I think for the first couple of weeks, a lot of people were like, you know, trying to be better about COVID and social distancing and wearing masks. And then like, you know, an increasing percentage of people like were like, I can't handle this. I need to like be social at different points in time throughout the whole thing. And and for my part, like I'm no saint, like I've been to parties and stuff since uh, since it's happened. And I try to stay indoors I, and I don't I try not to like, you know, engage with my my parents at all. In fact, I did get COVID, as I said. And I had literally every single person I'd been in contact with get tested and everybody came back negative and everybody's been fine since. So, yeah, I mean, I get I get where people are like critical of it because they're like most people recover. But, you know, it's it's still a very serious thing. Um, but, you know, it sucked in that way. But they, I mean, there's been some good things, I guess, like, um, you know, we like, I don't know, when when Disney reopened for the first time during COVID, it was, they, they only let the Disney pass holders um, come back into the park. And I'm telling you, we went to Epcot, which is a, a big park physically, like space-wise, and um, there was nobody there. And it was during Food & Wine, so they had all the vendors with all these good drinks and good food and just the best kind of shit. All the rides like were just super easy to get on. And I was like, this is the best food and wine I'm ever. I had no intention of like doing food and wine when I was out there, but I'm like, man, it is never going to be like this again. You know, it's like what I always say about like going to see the magic in the finals in 2009. You know, I'm like, dad, me and you as father and son, we're not going to get to enjoy the magic in the finals ever again. Uh, so we need to do this now. So, uh, you know, take a stake of where you are in time and just kind of put your foot down, you know? And yeah, it was great. And then of course, like within a couple of weeks, like, you know, Disney increases the capita that can come into their park because they realize they're not making any fucking money. And then suddenly it's just like this terror of not really socially distanced at all. Um, and yeah, I, I was like, I don't really want to keep doing this. So, so Disney ended up kind of being a bust a bit. Um, and then, um, I mean, there were some other good things. Like, I mean, I think the fact that everyone, or at least myself, I was indoors a lot of the time. Um, you know, we got into a lot of different video games this year. Like, you know, Divinity was a big one that we liked. Gwen got into games like way more than she usually does. She got into Pokemon. It was really because like she started to play the Switch more. Like Pokemon and Fire Emblem and this Hades has been like the latest one. And Animal Crossing and all this stuff and um, and obviously Divinity, like I said. Um, but, and I got into cocktails. I mean, obviously, I mean, these aren't really cocktails, but um, I got into like drinks because I'd always, you know, I'd always really liked cocktails and I wanted to learn more and I wanted to get into mixology and I've made some super dope ass drinks um, in uh, in the recent past that have, I felt like demonstrate that I've, I've learned quite a lot about making syrups and preparing drinks and the whole concept and what to pair what with. So that's been a hobby. d and I've talked about, you know, um, I've, we're, we've been in a campaign where Parker's been DMing for like six months and um, and I've been writing a campaign and a one-off for way too long at this point. Worked on a ton of projects, lots of little ideas. Um, Things that I wished were out by the end of the year, but I, I think my energy levels kind of dipped and I didn't really want to like grind anymore. I have this book of, uh, this is actually, here's a sneak peek. Um, and I actually busted the top, somehow I busted the top binder on this, but this is um, pages uh, for character sheets for my one-off here. And you can kind of see what the whole like general structure is. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't, I don't have a view on my, my cam right now, but we printed all this out and like bounced it and this is all stuff that's going in for the one-off so I need to get a new binder and, and when we do the finished one I wanted to get like something nice and leather and something that would be like thematically appropriate for D&D &D. but I've been building that hopefully it'll be done early uh, next year but there's also like a lot of like shitty stuff that's happened this year like outside of like the cool hobbies that I feel like I'm gonna stick with like there's been like from like the lowest level, like Sean and Danielle and a couple of other friends like Jose, like moved away. And I imagine uh, Parker's moving away to, uh, he already moved down to South Florida cause me and Gwen moved in together. And then he's um, gonna move out to LA in like a couple months. But I feel like this is sort of like the twilight years of all of our friends, like 
being able to see each other. And it's really not the same to like talk to people on Discord all the time. Like I frankly get really tired of listening to people talk about the same old shit all the time on Discord. Um, it's just boring. I hate seeing people not grow and not improve and not like get exposed to new ideas and new things and have energy. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I would rather see people. And I think like recently we've been trying to see more people cause it's very energizing. Um, but I mean, even more so than even that on the bad front, like a lot of my friend, like I've had friends whose businesses have closed. Like my cousin's uh, husband, Arthur, he, he owns the suffering bastard, which is a great bar down, um, in Sanford inside of Tuffy's. He had this other bar called uh, bitters and brass, which looked really cool. And that closed cause you know, the bar, the bar restrictions were just too bad and they just totally tore them a new one, you know? And I mean, Lucky's closed, but that was more about market issues and they're, they over, they expanded way too quick. Um, Dandelion closed, Sanctum closed, but their food kind of sucked by the time they closed and they closed for weird sexual allegations and trying to think who else closed a couple other groups closed um, a lot of crappy like downtown bars closed Swan City Bagel closed for like political statements that certain people had made that came off as racist on their Facebook's account a uh, Facebook accounts I never saw these posts but that's what I heard so a lot of businesses closed this year because or otherwise uh, from COVID and I mean we're like 10 years in the past in terms of like economic growth right now so I mean we, the closures have really smacked our economy um, and there have been lots of layoffs. I mean, I'm in the EBTO organization. I know that we laid off like 15% of our staff and there's talks about even more people getting laid off. Um, I know Disney had big layoffs. Lots of big companies have had big layoffs and it just really sucks. I mean, and, and being clear on a much worse level, I know of two people that killed themselves this year. You know, I think it's, uh, I mean, obviously that's like the fucking worst thing that could happen. And I think this year has been really tough for people that are like single and they don't live with other people. They're kind of isolated, especially if you like give a fuck about social distancing at all. Cause I think like a lot of these single people are just like, fuck it at this point. Like I know that's how Parker was at one point. Like he was just kind of like whatever about it at a certain point. But, um, but yeah. And I mean, again, it's not, it's not fair for me to point the finger cause I think it's okay to get exhausted with something when you've been doing it for two months and you haven't talked to anybody or done anything. Um, and as long as you're like not exposing yourself to like, you know, adults or elderly people all the time, then like, I think it's fine to just stay isolated, you know, or to, 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 to be socially distanced, hanging out with people and to isolate yourself from them. Like, I mean, you can't just expect everybody to do nothing for like a year. You know what I mean? I think it's just, that's just crazy. So. Um, but it sucks. And I know like other people, like I know, like recently John Mulaney just went into rehab for cocaine, you know, I mean, I don't know how much of like quarantine has really brought that out, but I feel like I've heard more stories of people with substance issues or depression. I mean, I definitely know people personally that are fit that bill of like, you know, single corporate job working guy that have really struggled this year because of COVID and because of just the isolation and the, and the, all the, the plans that get canceled and all this like stuff going on. So I'm really looking forward to like a much more uh, extroverted year. I want to hang out with people in person. I've been trying to hang out with people in person a lot more ever since news of this vaccine is out. You know, I, I basically, um, I, I've been doing this exercise called knees over toes, which there's this guy. Um, it's um, something Patrick, I forget what his first name is, but his last name is Patrick. And um, he has these exercises that like improve your knees because when I was playing basketball, I would get like really bad knee pain, which is a lot of like why I had to slow down on it even before COVID. And he like helps protect your knees. He's got these great exercises. All kinds of people do it from like, you know, people with ACL and MCL tears to just people with bad knees, people aren't athletic, people who are like top athletes. These exercises work. So I've been doing that and I've been leading Austin and Najee in workouts for the last like three weeks doing that every like twice a week. They come over and we do them. Um, and then I've just been making a point of seeing people more on the weekends. A lot of our D and D sessions are back to being in person, which is good. So that's every week and it's just energizing, you know, it sucks to like be by yourself or like even just you and your girlfriend. Like I love, like, don't get me wrong. I love Gwen and me and Gwen have had a great year, like as far as our relationship goes. But, um, 
you know, we're both like, we want to see our friends, you know, we want to like go do stuff. And it's energizing when you like, you get to talk to people and like, you know, talk about shit and like what's been going on and what weird shit's been happening. What's the tea? Like spill, you know, spill what's going on. It sucks when you don't have them. There's nothing going on and nothing's happening. It's not that energizing. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel more intelligent. It makes you happier to see people too, to be out there. So, but yeah. And then in recent times, like, you know, again, as I've alluded to, I mean, not alluded to, just talked about, like we moved into this new place and I'm very happy that we're here. And I'm sure in another episode, you guys will get like a tour. Um, that is like close to a lot of things we like and it's like feels a lot more adult and I feel like it's the right step for us in our relationship and at just my age but um you know the money's been tough and like you know I've had like some stressful freak outs in the um like a you know a couple weeks ago or something where I've been like dude I I keep my checking account is not what I thought it would be after doing all this budgeting and I don't know why this is charging and I'm not quite sure if I should have spent money on this and I've been re you know refurnishing this whole house and I'm like I don't know but I mean, lately it's been pretty good. It's it's not been an issue and I've been budgeting better. So it's weird to say that you've had like actual money fears, like true fears about not having enough for like the first time in your life when you're 28, you know, it's a, a bit of a privileged position. So um, again, as for me, I'm hoping that 2020. Oh, and also like, you know, we did other stuff. Like we went to, we had fun. We went to Asheville. Um, that was like the big trip. We before we moved, we we went on this road trip to Asheville, and it was really fun. And it made me and Gwen realize that like you know we're we're here in Orlando for like probably the next year, year and a half. But we we don't want to stay here. Like there's other places to be, other things to see. And and if anything, 2020 is like, bro, if you got the time, if you got the money, go and fucking do it, dude. Because the whole world might fucking end, and you might not have the ability to do those things you want to do. And and it's it's just unfortunate because I was definitely in that mindset going into 2020, and I was just so hungry for life at the beginning of the year, and then COVID just just killed like all my plans, you know. So I know a lot of other people have had it worse. I know people have lost their job. I know people who have dealt with it. Like we've gotten really depressed, as I said. I know people that like you know. This year just flat out sucked objectively for them. And frankly, it wasn't my favorite year either, but I'm optimistic about next year. I'm intending for it to be a very extroverted year. I got to kick 2021's ass for two years of time because 2020 was such a fat fucking sack of shit. And um, yeah, I hope 2020 dies in a fucking house fire and nobody ever talks it, uh, talks about it again because I hated this year. And uh, COVID can go suck my ass. Anyways, as eloquently as I just put that, that's 2020 trying to be optimistic and um, get back on track for what I wanted to do this beginning of this year, getting more organized again, getting back into the swing of working out, getting to actually play basketball again without feeling like I'm just spreading diseases directly by playing man to man defense and just bouncing my ball in this bouncing my ball bouncing the ball in this nasty court i mean at least at least the nba season restarted today um so i'll get to enjoy those games and the bubble was interesting when all that was going on too so yeah this this year has been so crazy with all the like movies pushed back and sports like the bubble and like things stopping and starting and changing and everything being like that so again trying to do what we wanted to do this year but in 2021. Um, and I think the house stuff is like the real change that I wanted. And I definitely have grown from doing this. And I'm very happy with where we are. So anyways, that's the episode. That's 2020. And that's it for me. I'll see you guys. And hopefully what ends up being a much better 2021. It doesn't seem like it would be that hard for next year to be better than 2020. But let's keep our fingers crossed. Any, anyways, I'll see you guys next time. I'm a little buzzed because I have killed most of both of these drinks. I don't know if you can see them. And uh, yeah, I think the liquor content was a little bit higher than I expected on both of those. So anyways, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>